Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here and today we're gonna do my updated game week 1 draft. Right, I've done a lot of tinkering, read a lot of articles, read a lot of websites, um, you know, kept up to date with the news, tinkered here and there and I'm kind of uh, happy with this draft as of now, right, of course it may be um, subject to further changes but at least this is how it's gonna look now. Right, and before we get into that, I just want to cover some of the best fixture rotations there are um, for you guys so that you can kind of choose some players that you want to go for and rotate them uh, accordingly. Right, so of course, if you do enjoy this video, please help me out and give it a like. Subscribe if you are new around here. Okay, so let's talk about this first um, pair of fixture rotations that we see on the screen right now, and it's Brighton and Aston Villa. Right, so this is one of the better fixture rotations among the three. Right, and the reason is because these two teams are pretty good as well, if you if you think about it. Brighton and Aston Villa, they did end the season pretty well, right, last season. And if you take a look at their fixtures, they kind of coincide very nicely where Aston Villa have a good run of fixtures from game week one to game week three. And then when they come to game week four onwards, they have a tougher run, right? And that's where Brighton's fixtures actually pick up, where they play Leeds, Fulham, Leicester, and Bournemouth. And then after that, in game week eight, both of them have a decent fixture, right? Crystal Palace for Brighton and Southampton for Aston Villa. So in general, you can kind of go for uh, the players that I've put beside me right now um, to kind of rotate. So obviously, it doesn't have to be defender for defender. Um, it can, you can even rotate between, let's say, an Undav and a Maddie Cash, right? Or uh, Leon Bailey and Undav. Right, you can have those rotations uh, all throughout your team, right, according to the positions and the price points that you require. Right, but I do feel like these players I've put down here are the three better players to get or to target from these uh, these teams respectively. Right, so Lewis Dunk, pretty cheap at 4.5, Lamti as well. And then Undav has just come in, he played really well in the Belgian Pro League. And so he's probably going to be a starter for Brighton as well. So at 5.5, he's probably one of the cheaper forward enablers, right? And if you take a look at Essen Villa, Medicash, uh, really, really good player. Nothing much to say there. Attacking threat as well as clean sheet possibilities, right? And then up front, there's uh, Ollie Watkins, of course. But I think a very interesting pick here is Leon Bailey because he is only 5 mil, right? So really good enabler for the midfielders. Um, if we need someone to kind of fill that spot for us and give us more money to spread around the, the team. So our next pair of fixture rotations is Newcastle and Brentford and I really like this one simply because both of them are up and coming teams, right? Newcastle, we know um, they've got new owners, they've got a lot of money now to kind of improve their squad and because of that, it makes them a really interesting option, right? So if you take a look at their fixtures, um, Nottingham Forest at home and then Brighton away, uh, that's their game week one and game week two fixtures for Newcastle. And then after that, if you take a look at Brentford, that's where uh, you can swap over to the Brentford players, where the fixtures really pick up after uh, game week two onwards, right? Because Brentford have a tougher game week one and two fixture. But thereafter, Fulham, Everton, Crystal Palace, Leeds, and Southampton away, right? That is simply an ideal run, right? And possibly even having Ivan Tony then could be a very good option as well. Right, and thereafter, in game week 8, where Brentford have Arsenal, right, that's where Newcastle come in and, and they have Bournemouth at home. Right, and usually in game week 8 uh, or, or game week 7, game week 8, that is when most of us will already want to use our wild card. Right, so if you take a look at the first 8 game weeks, Newcastle and Bren uh, Brentford rotate really, really well. Right, so once again, I recommend to target these um, 6 players, 3 from each of these respective teams if you want to go for them. So we have Kyrian Trippier at 5 mil, right, as a defender. Really exciting option there. He takes set pieces as well, we know that. And also he has a very high possibility of scoring them or even assisting in them, right. So he takes really good set pieces on top of his clean sheet possibilities. And then there's St. Maximin and Callum Wilson, right. And as for Brentford, there's Ivan Tony, of course, the main man up top. And then there's also Pontus Janssen, who's also an, uh, an interesting option to have at the back if we want. He's probably going to play almost every game for them. So if we're looking for stability, then Pontus Janssen would give us that. Um, and also, something to note as well is that Kenos now has been listed as a defender, but we know he's not a defender, right? He is a midfielder in essence, right? So he is kind of that out-of-position FPL gold asset that you want to go for. So Kenos is also a very interesting option if you want to go for a Brentford player.
So guys, before we get on with the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to Sore who's sponsoring today's video. Sore is one of the fastest growing fantasy football platforms in the world. It basically combines fantasy football with trading cards, so you can think of it as a mix of FPL, FIFA and Football Manager. Every week you get to build up the best team, set your captain and when that team performs well in real life, you win prizes like real money or valuable trading cards which you can keep to build a stronger team or trade on the marketplace. They're basically non-fungible tokens and you can sell them on the market to turn a profit. I've started playing for a while now and I've got to say guys, it's really cool and exciting to play this alongside FPL, especially since it is so similar. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in and if you want to support the channel, click the first link in the description to sign up for an account and get a free valuable card worth about up to 50 euros after 5 card purchases. If you guys do sign up, let me know down in the comments below what you think of the game. I really enjoy it and I hope you guys do too. So lastly guys, we have Wolves and West Ham. Right, so if you ask me, I think this pair of fixture rotations is kind of the most intertwined one, right? And it kind of goes back and forth pretty uh, often, right? So if you take a look at Wolves, they have Leeds and Fulham in game week 1 and 2. Then we move over to West Ham, Brighton at home in game week 3. And then we move back to Wolves where Newcastle, Bournemouth and Southampton are their next fixtures. And then West Ham have Newcastle and Everton. Right, so if you take a look at this um, back and forth movement, it's really, really um, a good set of fixtures right, for us to kind of rotate between these two teams. Right, so of course, these two teams are also really strong teams right, and exciting options to go for um, from all of, these, uh, all of these players that are beside me right now. Right, so Pedro Neto, of course, kind of the one of the better enablers and probably the one who is most talked about now. Right, at 5.5 mil, gives a very good attacking threat um, in the midfield as well. Then also there's Johnny, right, who is also a very cheap enabler, 4.5 uh, defender, and also he has attacking threat as well, right. Recently in uh, one of the preseason friendlies, he did assist um, one of the goals for Pudence, right. So Johnny is also a very good option, right. And then of course we have Jimenez, right, but I probably wouldn't go for Jimenez because he is slightly expensive um, up top, right. And then we have the West Ham players, of course, and Jared Bowen this time is listed as um, an 8.5 million midfielder so really expensive but if we do believe in his abilities which I think he can still profit from these fixtures then definitely we can still go for Jared Bowen but we would have to kind of compromise in other areas as well right and then it's also so far right a good option to have we know he has the tendencies to go all the way up and kind of give crosses as well right so good option pretty cheap as well and then we have for Niles, right? So for Niles is a very interesting option because he's kind of gone down in price this season, right? And because of that, he, his price range actually allows us to kind of have him as kind of a bench player if we need that, right? Which last season, um, his price range was slightly more expensive, around the 6 to 7 range. But this season, he is only 5 mil, right? So very interesting option there. Uh, and we can kind of go for for Niles if we want to. Right, guys, so here we have it. This is my updated Game Week 1 team. Right, so I've done a lot of tinkering and I'm kind of happy with this team as of now. Right, the squad value is at the top left, right, 100 mil. So I don't have any money left in the bank, so there is some rigidity to this uh, team. Right, I don't have that extra five, uh, 0 0.5 mil in the bank to kind of account for price rises. Um, hopefully this team can allow me to kind of make changes uh, along the way as well. Right, and then we have a 4-4-2 formation, right, but it could really change later on, I will explain. Right, it could go into a 5-3-2 as well, right, there's also a possibility based on the, the players on my bench. Right, so the plan for this team is that I'm going to want to wildcard in game week 7 or game week 8. Right, so with this in mind, I'm going, I'm going to need my players to kind of be able to tide me through the first 7 to 8 game weeks. Right, so the way that I'm going to do this is to kind of target the first eight fixtures instead of having players that target only uh, the first four or maybe three game weeks where they're kind of shorter term players. Right, so let's take a look in goal first and I have Sanchez. It could really just very well be Raya as well, right? But Sanchez is in goal for now. Both of them are at 4.5 mil, but for now I kind of favor Bre uh, Brighton's fixtures a little bit more. So Sanchez is in goal for me. And then I'm going to go with a back four, right? I have Trent. Chilwell, James, and Cancelo, right? So I'm going to explain the essentials first. And to me, I feel like Trent and Cancelo are essentials, right? And as for Chilwell and James, the reason why I've gone for both of them is because now Chelsea have signed Kalido Koulibaly, right? And also they are um, kind of beefing up their defense. So I do think that 
uh, even though there are players who have left, right, key players like Christensen and Rudiger who have left, right, their defence is still being shored up and there are still chances being made um, by Tuchel to kind of shore up the defence. So I do think that Chilwell and James do still have very good clean sheet potentials there. And then as for the attacking threat, I think nothing much needed to be uh, said there because we know that they are very attacking in nature as well. Right, so that's why I've gone for a double Chelsea defence in Chilwell and James. Right, I'm going to talk about my fourth defender, uh, my fifth defender later on. He's on the bench right now. Right, so if you take a look in midfield, I have Salah, Diaz, Martinelli and Neto. Right, so Salah, of course, is an essential for me as well and I intend to captain him in, uh, him in game week one. Right, so I've gone for Diaz as the 8.0 million um, placeholder. Right, because that we know that the 8.0 million midfield spot is an important price point hold. Um, but I've gone for Diaz... Uh, instead of uh, Robertson being the third Liverpool player, because uh, even though Robertson is one mil cheaper, right, but Diaz offers me that slot of uh, 8.0 mil in midfield, and on top of that, I don't really want to double up on uh, Liverpool defence when I already have Chilwell, James and Cancelo all uh, in my backline who have very good attacking threat as well. Right, so I'd rather go for Diaz, and if I need to later on in the season, I can... Uh, do maybe DS to Saka or maybe DS to Mares Foden if I need to, right? And then after that we have Martinelli and Neto, right? So this is an interesting one because Martinelli and ne uh, Neto weren't in my team uh, before this, right? Before this it was Rashford and Leon Bailey, but before making this video I kind of made the swap and I uh, went for Martinelli and Neto instead of Bailey and Rashford and that's because I kind of uh, I'm kind of starting to favor the Arsenal fixtures when I consider uh, from game week one all the way up to game week eight where Manchester United don't have as good a fixture right so even though Rashford who kind of caught my eye um, in recent games where he's played really well right but I'm, I've gone back now to Martinelli instead right and also for Leon Bailey even though he has had a really good preseason uh, we're going to talk about Neto now because I think he is a very good option to have at 5.5 mil, right? And from game week 1 to game week 8, he has very good fixtures, right? As opposed to Bailey who uh, has a very good run of first 3 game week fixtures and then after that, uh, as we said at the start of this video, Aston Villa's fixtures kind of go downhill after that, right? So Neto is going to enable me to kind of tight through the first uh, 7 to 8 game weeks and then uh, up till my next wild card. Right, so up front, we have Harry Kane and Jesus. Right, so I feel like to me, Jesus is kind of an essential at this point in time, even though he, of course, doesn't reach, uh, reach the heights of Trent and Salah. But I do feel like because of his ownership and also how potent he is in the attack in, in pre-season, as we've seen, right, and coupled with how good Arsenal fixtures are, I kind of can't go without Jesus. And I, I like Arsenal's fixtures so well. Um, and so much that I've gone for Martinelli and Jesus as the Arsenal double up in attack, right? So, and as for Harry Kane, I've gone for him at uh, the 11.5 million forward spot instead of Haaland because Salah and Kane rotate really well for captaincy options and we want our premiums to be able to kind of give us that um, ro captaincy rotation option, right? So that's why I've gone for Kane instead of Haaland and we now know as well that Haaland is nursing a little bit of a niggle, right? So... We, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the season where we're going to expect Haaland may get some injuries here and there, right? So we're going to start off with Kane here um, up front first, right? And then on the bench, I have the 4.0 million um, bench for the keeper in steel, right? So he's going to come in if Sanchez doesn't play. He's just a Brighton substitute keeper. And then we have Neko Williams, who's a really good enabler. Uh, he's a defender and obviously we know um, he's probably going to be in the starting 11 for uh, Nottingham Forest, right? And he is very attacking as well. So at 4 mil, there's absolute value there. And the reason why I said at the start that this can really become a 5-3-2 formation is because Neko Williams can really just come in for Neto when Neto's fixtures aren't that good, right? So that's why uh, Neko Williams is a very good option for me to have on the bench. And then, of course, we have a very good uh, budget midfielder, 4.5 mil at Andreas Pereira, right? So really good option there. And then we have Taylor from Nottingham Forest as well, who has kind of had a very good preseason in his uh, last game. Uh, Nottingham Forest uh, actually did really well and he scored two goals as well. Right, so Taylor on the bench is just a, a bench option for me if I need to call on him. Right, so I really, really like this team in terms of the flexibility it gives me. And if you take a look at the price points also, I kind of have 
um, good price points to move around to different players within the first eight game weeks if I need to. Right, I have the 8.0 million midfielder as mentioned just now. I do have a lot of premium defenders where I kind of just I can kind of just do some straight swaps if I want to do Cancelo to Robbo. Um, if Cancelo gets injured, or I can downgrade Cancelo to another uh Man City defender like Diaz, for example. Right, so very good price points um around this team. So that's why I really like this team. And that's why I'm not too worried about having no money in the bank to account for the price rises as well. Right, so uh, this is the team for now, right? Of course, it is subjected to further changes, but I do like it, right? Let me know what you guys think uh, of this team in the comments below. Uh, would you make any changes, right? Are all these players in your teams as well? Um, and who else do you have that are missing, right? Am I missing anyone in this team, right? But for now, um, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Bye-bye.